So we're going to um, solve some problems with regard to chapter one, introduction to financial statements. And we're going to look at uh, three exercises and one uh, problem. The three exercises that we're going to talk about really deal with definitions and understanding of the vocabulary, which is which is crucial for your understanding of of this material. So the 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 first exercise that I'd like to look at is exercise number one. And this is exercise 1.1 in your chapter. And it's kind of asking you to match up, if you will, um, words with definition. So let's let's take a look at these quickly. Uh, exercise 1.1, and specifically, uh, we're going to work our way down A through H. Uh, an expression, an expression about whether financial statements conform with generally accepted accounting principles. That's an auditor's opinion. An auditor is somebody, an outside accounting firm that comes in and looks at the books and records of the corporation and give an opinion as to the fairness of the presentation. Item B, a business that raises money by using shares of stock, and that is a corporation. When a corporation is formed, an individual stockholder will give money to a corporation in exchange for a stock certificate, hence a stockholder. So the answer to that question, a business that raises money by issuing shares of stock is a corporation. Item C, the portion of stockholders' equity that results from receiving cash from investors is common stock. Moving on to item D, obligations to suppliers of goods. Key word here is obligations, that is an accounts payable. Item E, amounts due from customers, that is accounts receivable. Item F, a party to whom a business owes money. That is a creditor. Item G, a party that invests in common stock. That is a stockholder. And item H, a business that is owned, owned jointly by two or more individuals but does not issue stock is a partnership. That's exercise one. Let's move along to exercise 1.2. And again, this is a matching process, trying to get you familiar with the, the language, the vocabulary, so you understand what's going on as we move along through the, the course. Um, item A, assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. And that's going to be the basic accounting equation. Item B, an individual who has met certain criteria and is thus allowed to perform audits of a corporation. That is a certified public accountant. Item C, payments of cash from a corporation to its stockholders. Those are dividends. Dividends are the distribution of earnings to the stockholders. Item D, the cost of assets consumed or services used in the process of generating revenues. Those are expenses. Operative words are consumed and used. Item E, amounts owned to creditors, amounts owed to creditors in the form of debts and obligations. Those are liabilities, amounts owed or obligations and liabilities. Item F, a section of the annual report that presents management's views on the company's ability to pay near-term obligations, its ability to fund operations and expansion, and its results of operations is item two, management discussion and analysis. Key in that phraseology is presents management's views. Item G, the amount by which expenses exceed revenues. That's a net loss. To the extent revenues exceed expenses, that's net income. Item H, the increase in assets or decrease in liabilities resulting from the sale of goods or the performance of services. That's going to be revenues. Operative word there, sale of goods, performance of services. It's revenue. 
Item I, regulations passed by Congress to reduce unethical corporate behavior. That's going to be item 11, Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Item J, a business owned by one person. It's item seven. That's going to be a sole proprietorship. And item K, the owner's claim to assets. It's going to be stockholders' equity. Let's move along to exercise E1.4. And here we want to get a sense of, you know, what type of account these are, whether it's an asset, a liability, stockholders' equity, revenue, and expense. And that's important because that's going to tell you where it goes when preparing a financial statement. Accounts payable, that's a liability. It's going to go on the balance sheet. Accounts receivable is an asset. That's also going to go on the balance sheet. Equipment, it's another asset, it's going to go on the balance sheet. Sales revenue is revenue. Again, that's going to go on the income statement. Service revenue is a revenue, that's going to go on the income statement. Inventory is an asset, that's going to go on the balance sheet. Mortgage payable is a liability, balance sheet. Supplies expense, that's an expense, goes on the income statement. If it just said supplies, that would be an asset. It would go on the balance sheet. Rent expense is an expense. It's going to go on the income statement. And lastly, salaries and wage expense is an expense, goes on the income statement. So the next problem what I'd like to look at, this is a problem, problem 1.4, problem 1.4, and this is the Reese Incorporated Company, and we're essentially going to be provided with a list of accounts, and you need to prepare an income statement, statement of retained earnings, and a balance sheet. So the first thing I'd like to do is read through the accounts and let's label them, whether it's an asset, a liability, stockholders equity, revenue, or an expense. Accounts payable is a liability. And I would suggest as you prepare these things, put a little letter next to it. I put an L next to it. Interest expense is an expense. Equipment is an asset. Salaries and wages expense is an expense. Bonds payable is a liability. Unearned service revenue is a liability. Unearned service revenue means they have an obligation to perform a service in the future. We're going to talk about that in a later chapter, but it is a liability. Accounts receivable is an asset. Cash is an asset. Supplies is an asset. Supplies expense is an expense. Depreciation expense is an expense. Service revenue is a revenue. Salaries and wages payable is a liability. Common stock, stockholders equity, and interest payable is a liability. So now that you have all that information, you can go ahead and prepare income statement, Statement of Retained Earnings, and the Balance Sheet. So this is Reese Incorporated. This is the income statement. And this is for the month ended October 31. 2022. That is the title. The title is very important to put on your financial statement. The revenue is going to be the service revenue. And that's $20,920. 
and we have some expenses. Again, from the list that was provided to us, we have, and I'm going to kind of abbreviate a little bit, salaries, $2,500, interest expense, four ten. dollars supplies, and this is supplies expense, three eighty. dollars depreciation, which we'll talk about in a later chapter. 270 you have total expenses of 35 60 revenues exceed expenses so we have net income of 17,360 dollars net income now this number is important because you know we're going to use that number when it comes time to preparing the statement of retained earnings. So let's erase this. And let's move on to the statement of retained earnings. It's still Reese Company. Retained earnings statement. It's still for the month of October, and let's call it retained earnings. And this is at 10 1 22, and it was zero. Well, why is it zero? It's zero because they told us in the problem Reese Inc., a provider of consulting services, was founded on October 1, 2022. So that means it just came into existence. It has no undistributed profits because that's what retained earnings is is the undistributed profits we're going to add net income and we know where that number comes from that comes from the statement of income which we just looked at seventeen thousand three hundred and sixty dollars we would normally subtract Dividends, but there are none in this problem. No dividends. I put. I like to put the line there anyway. So we have retained earnings. Ending retained earnings, 17,360. So this would be at 1031, 22. Ending retained earnings. Last thing we want to do is prepare the balance sheet. It's still the Reese Incorporated balance sheet. But the balance sheet is at a point in time. So we're going to call this balance sheet. And it's going to be at or as of. You can put either one of those in there, it's acceptable. Or you can just simply put the date, 10 31 it's at a moment in time. So we'll have our assets over here. And again, you're referring back to the problem where they, where you identified everything as an asset, liability, etc. We have cash, 39.50. We have accounts receivable. Again, I'm abbreviating AR, $1,300. Supplies, not supplies expense, $2,460. And we have equipment, net $48,200. For total assets of $55,910. 55, now, ideally, Assets plus stockholders, uh, liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Again, I abbreviate should equal that same number. Let's take a look at it. We have bonds payable of $21,500. We have accounts payable, $3,300. We have unearned 
revenue of 4065 we have salaries payable of 445 interest payable of 140 total liabilities of 29 450 and I'm running out of room as you can see I apologize and we have common stock of $9,100 retained earnings $17,360 this is for a total of $24,000 $24,450 24,000, 26,000, my apologies.